house but then there are hidden meanings hidden, hidden levels hidden levels of meaning so we are trying to associate this work with all that we have studied about post colonial literatures so what is post colonial about the house or using this house as a symbol what post colonialism is he talking about we'll try and see that so we are trying to read this poem at two levels all right we'll be looking at this poem at two levels so if you see the screen you can see the picture of uh, ramanujan there ak ramanujan and just uh, have a look at it that's him okay so let's get started with the poem the first stanza sometimes i think that nothing that ever comes into this house goes out things that come in every day to lose themselves among other things lost long ago among other things lost long ago so this is that introduction to that ancestral house the house that he is speaking about so these are all little little things he is remembering about the house so that's why it's called small scale reflections you know when you are thinking about a house there are so many memories associated with a house about people about uh, events instances things there are different things that we associate with any house and when you are talking about an ancestral house that is an ancient house there will be you know n number of memories associated with that all right so likewise these are little little reflections but these reflections they become an occasion for the poet to think about many other things on a larger scale so this also becomes a social commentary a social commentary of you could say the earlier 19th century 19th 20th century the things that were happening all that will get reflected in this poem for instance the world wars and it was also the time of decolonization wherein india had become free so when you become free we have already seen that one fine morning we don't become totally post colonial it's not that erasure and then we are you know beginning of fresh that is not done so the traces of the colonial past it still lingers so all these things get reflected so now look at this house so he's saying at times i think that whatever comes into this house it never goes out so this is a very interesting house something very interesting and why is it interesting and what is the characteristic of this interesting house is that whatever comes into this house it never goes out so it is like that you could call it like a black hole that keeps on attracting things you know things keep on coming one after the other so they keep on coming and they never go out so things that come in every day to lose themselves among other things lost long ago among other things lost long ago so you have something coming inside the house and it is lost with other things that are already there and already lost inside the house so it's kind of a mess so in into that mess comes newer things and they also get lost among the older things already lost so you can understand that this ha house has a history of things that are lost so everything is getting collected going inside the house never to go out now he is listing out the different things that have come into this house and never has gone out so what are the things he is listing out it's it's kind of a chronological list so very funny the first one lame wandering cows from nowhere have been known to be tethered given a name encouraged to get pregnant in the broad daylight of the street under the elders supervision the girls hiding behind windows with holes in them so very funny so some wandering cows wandering here and there would come inside their property into the yard and what happens to these cows some lame wandering cow they would come inside the house and the people would kind of make the cow their property so once the cow is a property of the house what's the next thing that is done cows are made to get pregnant it's only then it would give milk right so these cows wandering cows god knows who who they belong to so these cows they come and then they are made pregnant in broad daylight so there's no shame or anything associated with that so it's very funny so they are encouraged to get pregnant in broad daylight of the street under the elders supervision so elders would be supervising the whole process of getting the cows pregnant and then you have these girls children they would be hi hiding behind the 
windows and trying to watch what is happening usually children are not welcome to these kind of scenes so that's the first funny incident you know instance of things coming into the house and not going out that of cows coming so next what do we have unread library books usually mature in 2 weeks and begin to lay a row of little eggs in the ledgers for finds as silver fish in the old man's office room breed dynasties among long legal words in the succulence of victorian parchment so what's the next thing that has come into the house and not gone out unread library books so you go to library you issue books but then you don't get time to read or maybe you simply forget about the books so what happens to these books they lie in some corner these books they will be lying somewhere they mature mature as in books as time goes on they become kind of yellowish in color they become kind of yellowish in color so they they becoming mature so around in 2 weeks time and then when books are left to themselves and you don't touch the books what happens to the books you have these small little tiny creatures silver fishes you call them a silver fish this small uh, silvery color insect you must have seen right so they start laying eggs inside the book so they start laying eggs in a row and then it is they are they are laying eggs where in the ledger for finds in the library books you must have seen maybe in the last page or the first page you have that pocket kind of a thing into which you put the card that will be there earlier times and all right now we have that barcode but before barcode what was there there were these ledgers these tiny pocket like things stuck onto the books even today you will find that in many library books into which you insert the library card in which all the details are written the number the membership everything so into that ledger what do you find these tiny silver fishes they are laying ray, you know rows of eggs so eggs are laid into the ledgers the ledgers for find that is Uh, there will be a line into which there will be kind of fine that is if you are late in returning the book you have to pay the fine so that is noted in that particular line in that particular ledger so the eggs are laid there in the old man's office room the breed dynasties among long legal words in the succulence of victorian parchment so these books where are they kept they are in the old man's office room so somebody in the house some old fellow who has taken the book and then uh, the book is about all long legal words so maybe some law books some legal books that were brought into the house from some library and then dynasties that is different dynasties of these tiny creatures are bred inside the book by laying eggs these uh, these silver fishes they are kind of raising they are kind of giving birth to dynasties huge dynasties inside these books into the succulence of victorian parchment succulence is what is succulence succulence is actually uh, fresh and fleshy the books are like food for these tiny creatures and the food is really rich in meat as in it is meaty meaty for these creatures so that is succulence plenty so succulence of victorian parchment parchment is that pages the pages maybe the leather bound copy whatever so that is actually very rich it's kind of rich food for these tiny little creatures that are laying eggs and are multiplying themselves and creating a dynasty inside the books so you have you know everything multiplying and growing more and more in numbers and that's a speciality of this house all right so now so first we had the cows some lame wandering cows coming and becoming a part of the house they become pregnant and they have their children their progeny whatever next you have library books and with the coming of the library books we also have these silver fishes so they also come they start reproducing and uh, producing how you could say dynasties of their creatures and then the next you have neighbors dishes brought up with the greasy sweets they made all night the day before yesterday for the wedding anniversary of a god never leave the house they enter like the servants the phonographs the epilepsies in the blood 
sons in law who, who quite forget their mothers but stay to check accounts or teach arithmetic to nieces all right so it's a long list comma 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 see so the next in line is neighbors dishes brought up with the greasy sweets they made all the night the day before yesterday for the wedding anniversary of a god so a uh, you know you could say it's a reference to all kinds of tradition it's a traditional house a traditional area traditional place so you have wedding anniversary of some gods so people are making all kinds of greasy sticky sweets and they are brought into you know brought in these dishes so dishes come inside the house but then the dishes are never returned dishes are never returned so they never leave the house they enter and what are the other things that they enter i mean enter the house and never leave the servants the phonographs the epilepsies in the blood that is uh, all kinds of diseases genetic diseases that are passed on from one generation to the other epilepsy apasmaram right so that is also something genetic and passed on from one generation to the other so if somebody has it in the family then it will go to the next person and to the next you know it's passed on through the blood so epilepsy is in the blood sons in law who quite forget their mother so there was sons in law who come into the house marrying daughters of the house what happens to them they forget their own mothers it is it's a very funny take usually sons are, are not someone who would forget their mothers right so sons they forget their mothers and they stay back in the house and what do they do they take care of the accounts they check the accounts of the house and they teach mathematics to little children these girls little nieces so so you have neighbors dishes then you have the servants coming into the house but never leaving they also become a part of the family then you have the phonographs the older kind of you know vinyl records you've seen that right so phonographs and then you have epilepsy diseases that are passed on from one generation to the other and then sons in law who come into the house but then they never go back now next in the list are the women who come as wives from houses open on one side to rising suns on other to the setting accustomed to wait and to yield to monsoons in the mountains calendar beating through the hanging banana leaves and also anything that goes out will come back processed and often with long bills attached so the next is the long line the long list of women who come as wives so the sons of the house they would marry and these women they come into the house as wives so they come from houses open on one side to rising sun this is uh, you can you can have um, a feminist reading of these lines so these women they come from bright houses that is they come from very happy backgrounds happy childhood everything so that's why you have the figure the imagery of the rising sun standing for all kinds of hope brightness a new beginning all right the rising sun so houses with rising suns on one side so they leave those houses and they enter this ancient mansion this old house so so what is happening here on another to the setting so when once they come the sun sets here as in once they become wives that is the end of their lives that is they they become mere wives so what is the duty of the, these wives cooking cleaning waiting upon their husbands taking care of the children cleaning up the house so their whole life becomes a kind of an endless list of drudgery working and waiting upon others so they just become kind of nobody all right so you, women who come as wives from houses open on one side to rising suns on another to the setting so once they come into the house it's kind of sunset for them are comes accustomed to wait so look at these lines so they become used to waiting they are like servants they are like maidens they are all the time waiting waiting as in doing things for husband and the family so they, they become used to waiting and to yield to monsoons in the mountains calendar beating through the hanging banana leaves so seasons pass on you have monsoons coming and then you have you know rains coming you know that way so season pass on and they get used to this rhythm of life and what is this rhythm of life in this house they are just like waiters they're just like maids they're like butlers cooks 
washer women whatever right so that becomes their life and also anything that goes out will come back processed and often with long bills attached so now again a generalization so whatever goes out even if anything happens to go out of the house it would always come back so the house is like a magnet it's like a black hole attracting things back so whatever goes it will come back but then how will it come back it's usually processed and with long bills attached and see the next lines like the hooped bales of cotton shipped off to invisible manchesters and brought back milled and folded for a price cloth for our days middle class loins and muslin for our richer nights so you have an example of cotton what happens to cotton the cotton that we cultivate or we cultivated here in india they would all be taken to manchester in england manchester was the center of cotton cloth production all right the greatest industry manchester of the world when you are talking about manchester of the world means centers of production so raw materials would be taken from here it would be taken there at cheap prices and there it would be converted into different kinds of clothes you have muslin which is the finest finest luxurious kind of cotton you know very soft very smooth malmal that is muslin and then you have uh, rough cotton so once it is converted into these kind of products obviously the value the rate would increase value addition is done so from cotton it is converted into cloth which would fetch a greater price for the cloth compared to the raw material so there will be these tags price tags attached to these clothes so it would come back milled and folded it would be made into you know bales of uh, like bales of hooped bales of cotton would be made into clothes and will come back for a price clothes for our days middle class loins so all in a garments cotton garments and then muslin for our richer nights so for our daily wear and also for our night wear and luxury wear the different kinds of clothes they come back with a price tag attached so this is a direct reference to the colonial times yes so no materials raw materials used to be you could say not bought actually looted many a times looted the farmers would hardly get anything so these things would be taken very cheap out of the country taken to these mills in england and they produce clothes and then they would again sell it to these colonies and double triple the price so the kind of profit margin was pretty high the profit margin was pretty high so this is a reference to the colonial times the colonial way of what were they doing they were actually give a word for this exploitation colonial exploitation taking away the raw materials and then refining it making into these end products and then selling it back for twice thrice the price it is worth for so obviously all the benefit all the thing would go to the british east india company right that was their policy letters mailed have a way of finding their way back with many redirections to wrong addresses and red ink marks earned in tiruvalla and sialkot so now letters even in the older times and all you post letters many a times it would come back maybe they could not find the person or maybe the address was wrong so what would happen to the letters you mail the letters but it somehow it will find its way back so it will go to some post office somewhere maybe in tiruvalla our own kerala or it will go to sialkot which is now in pakistan so it will go all over the place it will be marked by the postmasters that you know red mark and all they do that they used to do that if the address is wrong or they would redirect it and finally it will come back to the house from where it was sent so letters would come back now ideas and ideas behave like rumors once casually mentioned somewhere they come back to the door as prodigies born to prodigal fathers with eyes that vaguely look like our own 
like what uncle said the other day that every plotinus we read is what some alexander looted between the malarian rivers now all these ideas ideas as in maybe uh, some kind of um, new inventions discoveries right ancient india is credited with the discovery of so many things but then we haven't got the credit for many of the things yes or no because they have been looted or they have been taken away by somebody or the other and it is there in some other museum and who gets the credit that it belongs to them but originally it actually came from our own land so like that so that's the reference so ideas they are like rumors you mention it somewhere what is the rumor you just say something to someone and you tell them please don't tell anybody in a day or two everybody would know it that's the quality of a rumor same is the case with ideas you know you have your own idea whatever in the house but then somebody would kind of take it out whatever and then it will become something else and it will always come back to the house the ideas will always come back they come back to the door as prodigies born to prodigal father so it is again a funny reference that all these um, sons of the house maybe they go somewhere and they have some relations and they have children out of that and then the children will come back to the house claiming that we belong to this house that classic movie situation right that i am your grandchild and you know people they come back to claim their right so like that these children they come back born to prodigal fathers with eyes vaguely eyes that vaguely look like our own so when somebody comes and claim that i belong to your blood and then you will be looking and then you see okay that this person somehow resembles somebody in the family you know you know that you get that sense so and this is like what uncle said the other day and one of the family members what did he say that every plotinus we read plotinus is a greek philosopher greek philosopher the ideas that we get out of these greek philosophers so every plotinus we read actually is what what some alexander looted between the malarian river so again uh, a reference to the time uh, during which alexander the k is you know alexander the great we know about him right he had uh, conquered he could say almost three fourths of the world during his time he had come up to india he had the last battle was with the king porus king porus puru the puru dynasty and and it was during that time that he died of malaria and many of his soldiers had died and also had he not fallen ill and died there in the borders of india he had come up to uh, that pakistan sin the side so they, he had come to india so if he had not died maybe he would have gone even further and he would have conquered the whole world right so he had come up till here and the group you know his army and all they would have looted so many rich belongings maybe books ideas philosophy treaties that belong to this part of the world so these ideas were carried by these soldiers back to ancient rome it must have gone back to the ancient world so from there the other thinkers the greek philosophers and other Ro roman philosophers they must have got the ideas so today we read all these great thinkers and we think oh my god look at them but actually where did they get these ideas from many of these ideas would have had their origins in the call i mean these places so maybe it, it is our own idea that was actually taken by these uh, soldiers this uh, army of alexander the great and then taken back to the western world and they thought about it they wrote about it and today what do we do we read the same thing thinking that it actually belongs to the west so maybe it would have had its origins its root these great ideas in our own land in our own country you understand that so all credit goes to them but actually it must have gone from here fine so he's talking about ideas so a reference to ideas a reference to our literature our sciences all the advancement that this part of the world had which were taken away by these attacking forces so that's why we have a reference to alexander alexander the great so every plot in this that we read today actually may be something what alexander must have looted between the malarial rivers malarial rivers as in a reference to the rivers in that the sindh 
uh, Pakistan, that particular region, because he met his end there. So he must have carried these ideas. If not him, at least the army men, the other people must have carried it back to the Western world, and they would have elaborated and written it down and become big, big treaties and philosophies, whatnot, which we today read thinking that it belongs to them. Actually, it has its origins here. You understand? So again, uh, an example of looting, an example of uh, kind of, you know, the native people, not only during the Britishers time, even before that, that is, since time immemorial, this has been happening. The greater powers coming, looting and taking away, taking away. So do we stop here for the day? Yes, ma'am.